Are you still sore? I can't work here no more. It'll be all right. And we have the cure. This new miracle drug, OxyContin. Hey, Rory, nice to meet you. Where in Ireland are you? Uh, we're in Dublin. Have you ever been? I love Dublin. Oh, well, there you go. Great city. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Fantastic. Um, first of all, congratulations on the show. From the first three episodes, uh, I'm immediately impressed by the fine line that uh, the show has managed to kind of walk the kind of balance like on. And it's obviously a very heavy subject, but it is still an entertaining show to watch. It's, it doesn't feel like a, a, a complete drag. And, you it, you know, a show like this could feel that way. Um, was that a difficult balance, I, I guess, to strike when you were coming up with it and writing the scripts and stuff? I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say it was a difficult balance. I would say that it was in, in many ways my job. That if I, that if I didn't keep the show working as a dynamic piece of storytelling that people are going to want to watch, um, it would, it would not have gotten made. And if it got made, it would not have succeeded. Um, so I go into it knowing that that's what I have to do. Um, and it's part of the DNA of the very conception of the piece. That's why there's, uh, it's framed around uh, the U.S. Attorney's case, why, why, we're, why we're following a DEA agent, because those are active investigations. Uh, there's something kind of exciting about following people, uncovering facts of criminal behavior, especially when it's criminals like Purdue Pharma, some of the great criminals in modern U.S. history. Um, so, so that's, that's part of Part of the challenge, but part of the goal is to not weigh the show down, um, but also not uh, diminish uh, the true tragedy of what's occurring as well. Yeah, like you, you, as you mentioned there, like the, there is something very exciting about like the investigatory aspect of this. Um, and as I was watching it, the, the vibes I was getting was equal parts, almost Sicario, but also Spotlight, the, uh, that fantastic mm. Tom McCarthy movie. That's interesting. Um, were there any like particular, I guess, tonal or cinematic or television touchstones for you that you're like, this is kind of what we're aiming towards? Yeah, you're the first person to mention Sicario. I've never heard that before, but I love Sicario. That's a great movie. I actually love the sequel too. And Spotlight was my favorite movie of that year. I love Spotlight. Um, the uh, uh, the main one that Barry Levinson and I talked about a lot was The Insider. Oh, yeah. uh, there seemed to be a lot... Um, what we were up to was not so dissimilar to The Insider, and we love The Insider. Uh, so tonally, that was a touch point. Uh, traffic, for me, was my earliest concept. I thought, oh, I'm going to do traffic of the opioid crisis with intertwining stories to kind of try to tell a bigger totality of the event. And then uh, one thing that that Barry and I talked a lot about with the the wonderful cinematographer, Checo Verese, um, was uh, The Deer Hunter as well, that we wanted the coal town to have the authentic authenticity of the deer hunter. Um, but the the insider probably was one of the biggest touch points for our visual style. Um, Checo, uh, you know, talked about the lighting scheme in the insider and Dante Spinetta is the cinematographer, one of the greats uh, shot the insider. So we definitely got some inspiration from Michael Mann and, and Dante. Yeah, like it's now that you've mentioned them, I'm like, oh yeah, of course. That's like it's there's some like if you're gonna borrow from anything, you may as well borrow from some of the best of all time. So totally yeah. on board for that. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting that like the character, uh Michael Stuhlberg's character in this is it's so easy to scope. Well, he's the bad guy and his company's the bad guy. But it does seem like there is, and again, I've I've just seen the first three episodes, but there is almost like his reasoning is is reasonable. It's like he does want a good thing at the end of all the money that he's making. He does in his mind seem to think, well, I just want people to not feel pain anymore. Like, but we know externally, like in the real world, <clears throat> some tar some terrible things have happened because of this. Is it's it, again, I know it's part of your job, but like how difficult is it to strike that balance of he's the bad guy, but we don't want just this boo his kind of one dimensional bad guy. Well, in, in that case, it was one of the hardest things to do in this show, partly because he's so vilified publicly, but then the people that I that I interviewed that knew him personally, 
they hated him even more. Um, I guess he's a very off-putting to person to be around. You've seen, uh, I was able to read emails that his son had written to his mother that had come out in Discovery. Uh, makes it sound like I like went into their email system. But <laughs> these emails had come out in Discovery in which he talked about his father in really kind of cold, brutal terms. So it seemed like this is a clearly a very difficult person to be around. Um, and so the question was, well, what makes him tick? What's really motivating him? He talks a lot about curing pain in these early episodes. Um, uh, you know, does he believe it? Uh, is he deluding himself? Does, uh, you know, I think those are some questions I'm hoping the audience is, is asking themselves, is, is this for real? Um, or, uh, you know, what, what's really going on with him? And I think over the course of the season, uh, we'll answer those questions. And like obviously he he delivers a great performance because it's it is kind of as you as you mentioned earlier you are kind of like well is he is he but uh, when you've got someone like Michael Keaton kind of at the center of it like he, obviously it's a it's an expansive piece but when you've got someone of his caliber it must just take a load off to, to know that like we, we've got Michael Keaton to deliver this emotional kind of core of the story and even from the episode so far you. You can almost see the arc immediately, and he is such a brilliant actor. But and obviously, you've worked with so many like talented people through years. But was that a load off for you when you're like, we've got Batman in our show, so I think we're good. You have no idea. I mean, literally, you summed it up so perfectly. But then it, it actually, I can even take it a step further, which is we had to block shoot all of Michael Keaton's work over a six week period. So we shot for two weeks. Then we shot for six weeks of all of Michael Keaton's scenes, and they were incredible. So I knew that I had gold with Michael Keaton going into the rest of the shoot, which was 75% of the shoot. So it wasn't even just knowing that I had him that we were going to be okay. It was that we shot it, and it was wonderful. Um, and that really was helpful um, through the course of the season, especially when I, you know, would be shooting scenes that were, you know, the kind of the investigation that had a procedural bent to it, uh, that were great scenes and really well acted. But knowing that I had these really emotional scenes to counterbalance them was something that brought a great deal of relief through the course of the rest of the shoot. Fantastic. Danny, I could talk to you all day about this show and I'm very excited to see the oh, rest of it. Thank you. Spread the word, please. That's my job. That's I love my it. Job. I love it. <laughs> going to cure the world of its pain.